as the woman holds up the toothbrush. Oh, no. As it will somehow protect her. Come on, B. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> she's you really holding up the toothbrush. Okay, let me chill. She's freaking out. She's about to die. Yo, we might do crazy things on the brink, but bro. I won't keep it going. Later in the void. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy Savvy, and welcome back to the Savvy Show. And in today's episode, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a scary and gruesome one, man. It looks pretty gruesome on surface level, title and thumbnail alone. And without any further ado, this is SCP-987, Mirrors of Death gruesome gallery so yo from just that title alone it gotta be something gory scary like that's gonna make me feel good yo it's friday so I i'm ready to get this heat man I, I can't wait to dive deep if you guys are excited for this reaction as well too and you guys are assuming it might be scary let me know in the comment section below what you think this might be about before we dive deep and also if you are excited for this reaction smash that like button as well really helps the channel grow and it'll mean the world and takes less than a second and it's 100% free. Also remember, if you do like my reaction style and you like what I cover, which is SCP animations and more in the future, remember to smash that sub button. I'm telling you guys, this is where we make our pit stop. We pick up the stragglers, the window shoppers, people on the fence. Yo, we don't bite. This is a family. Come join, have a blast with us. We go full throttle, all gas, no brakes, and it's going to be a blast. So. Love for you to join us, so hop on in. And without all of the way, remember to turn on post notifications so you don't miss an upload because I do multiple uploads frequently and I hate for you to miss one. Also remember, shout out to Dr. Bob for bringing this animation on Friday. It's gonna be a blast to react to and I can't wait to dive deep. So with that all out the way, without any further ado, let's get this show started. Alrighty, SCP-987, Mirrors of Death, Gruesome Gallery. <laughs> Yo, let's go. A woman runs through a house, screaming and crying for help. She looks behind her and catches a glimpse of a shadowy figure in the next room, and it's coming towards her. She screams again and runs in the only direction she can to get away from it, up the stairs. She runs into the bathroom at the top of the stairs and locks the door behind her. She is breathing heavy as she quickly takes stock of her situation. Oh, man. There's a window, but it's much too small for her to fit through. And even if she could, I'll say. <laughs> she'd probably break her neck trying to drop to the ground below. Oh my goodness. There's no way out. She's trapped. But she has an idea. Let's see it. She takes a deep breath, giving herself a brief moment to gather her courage she before she unlocks the door and opens it. She steps onto the landing and spots what she's looking for. A telephone on a small table. But then she also sees the shadow of the thing chasing her coming up the stairs. She runs to the phone and picks it up before running back into the bathroom again. <laughs> she shuts the door behind her and starts dialing 911. But just as she's about to die, they wouldn't get through that fast. The phone bro. is ripped out of her hands and slams against the door. She runs. Yo, like what logic is that though? For real, for real. Like it's right there. You think 911's going to be there instantly, like instant transportation? Like, no. <laughs> I wouldn't even waste time with that. Tends to pick it up again, but when she does, she finds that the cord has been cut. There's got to be something else she can try. Damn. She rushes to the medicine cabinet and starts searching for anything she can that might help her. Give him over, She though. frantically looks for something, anything, but is startled by a loud noise. She turns to see the door bulging oh. on its hinges again and again. Her pursuer is trying to kick it down. Oh my goodness. She goes back to searching the medicine cabinet. There must be something she can use. The woman closes the medicine cabinet, and for a second, time seems to stop. She stares at herself in the mirror, a look of confusion on her face. She mouths the words, help me, to herself in the mirror. The what? door suddenly bursts off the frame and slips. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, let, let's hear this one more time because my mind's going to places. Time seems to stop. She stares at herself in the mirror, a look of confusion on her face. She mouths the words, help me, to herself in the mirror. Bro! Yo, okay. I'm thinking this mirror chops the users. When I say users, the person that's looking at the mirror and the person that is dealing with this SCP, part of them gets trapped within the mirror. Hence why the mouth, help me. And some way, somehow, since she got trapped in the mirror, this monster was able to get out. So it takes places of, you know, the person that is, you know, the SCP. That's what I'm assuming. That's, that's what I'm figuring the SCP is going to be about so far. Like, the people that's looking at this mirror gets trapped and the, a monster comes out, you know, takes over their body. Who knows? That would be cool. But, yo, this is getting kind of crazy. We're only two minutes in. The door suddenly bursts off the frame and slams to the floor. The woman spins around holding the only thing she could find. 
a toothbrush. Wow. Her pursuer steps through the now empty doorway. He's a large, terrifying looking man with wild yet focused eyes. She looks high as hell. Focused? Focused? <laughs> this boy didn't look like he had sleep in a week. And he looks hella high, bro. Like, yo, that ain't focused. He's wishy washy looking around. Come on, bro. And he's holding the biggest knife she's ever seen. Jeez. The man approaches, and the woman cowers in fear. He pauses for just a moment, admiring himself in the medicine cabinet mirror and smiling, seemingly very happy with how this entire scene has unfolded. So that's part of the mirror. And then raises the knife above him as the woman holds up the toothbrush. Oh, no. As if it will somehow protect her. Come on, B. <laughs> yo. <laughs> she's really holding up the toothbrush. Okay, let me chill. She's freaking out. She's about to die. Yo, we might do crazy things on the brink, but bro. I won't keep it going. <laughs> Yo. It and the man brings down the knife again and again and again. This murder may have occurred over 40 years ago, oh. but its memory is more alive than you might think. Sometimes what happened in the past doesn't stay there and finds a way to repeat itself again oh. and again and again. Good. No, maybe not in the way that you expect. So join me, Dr. Bob, and find out exactly why SCP-987 is known to the SCP Foundation as the Gruesome Gallery. SCP-987 is a collection of 13 different wall-mounted mirrors of varying shapes and sizes, which have been designated as SCP-987-A through M. Over wow. half of the collection consists of medicine cabinets, but the others range in size from small makeup mirrors to full-length mirrors, with the largest measuring one by one and a half meters. Wow, that's interesting. So it's an actual gallery. All these SCPs are part of one whole. Oh, and I, w I wonder if they just got sold off to random people and they just thought it was like, you know, regular mirrors until shit starts acting up and the SCP Foundation come in and, you know, claim it. Dang. The aesthetic style and materials used indicate that all the mirrors were produced between the 1940s and the 1990s, and there's nothing about their construction or immediate appearance that would give the impression that they are anomalous at all. Photos and video of the mirrors also show them to be perfectly normal mirrors, with the surfaces reflecting exactly as you would expect. In all, it appears at first glance that these are completely normal mirrors, though more in-depth research into the mirrors has been made difficult. Hmm. We'll see why later. Okay. SCP-987 mirrors will finally reveal their strange and unnerving characteristics when a person stands directly in front of them and looks at their surface. Mm. When they do, they won't see their reflection as they expected, but an image of a completely different place. It was theorized by researchers that these locations being dimension? shown were the mirror's previous location, and research into the origins of the mirrors have revealed the original locations of mirrors C, K, and M, which confirmed this theory to be true. But the mirrors don't just show a static location. When someone looks directly into the mirror, they will see an entire scene play out. One that always depicts someone's extremely violent and or gruesome death. Each mirror wow. depicts a different scene and location, though most of them appear to take place in a bathroom of some kind. The scenes shown vary in length, with the shortest being just 48 seconds and the longest running for over four minutes. Damn. After the scene finishes, it will simply start again, like a video that has been set on repeat. What? But the strange qualities of SCP-987 don't wait, stop there. Wait, wait, wait. So, are these events happening in real time if it's on repeat? Like, this shouldn't be in real time, right? Unless the first iteration was, you know, when it happened in real time, and then everything after that is just like on, like, an endless loop. Or, that's not the case because, um, in the beginning, that scene where that girl died by the dude with the knife, they're saying it happened 40 years, but, you know, it's just like it was, like, yesterday. Like, it's so easy to see because probably someone's looking at the mirror and seeing that scene on repeat. Yeah, that definitely could be the case, but we shall see. There. After the video loops and repeats itself twice, the images will start to change. The person in the mirror who is about to suffer a horrific death will seem to become aware that someone is watching them through the mirror. They will often begin soundlessly pleading with the viewer to help them, growing more emphatic as the scene evolves. Whoa! If there is an aggressor present in the scene. They too will sometimes seem to become aware that they are being watched through the mirror, and may even appear to interact with the person who is watching them by making hostile gestures or writing on the surface of the mirror. Three of the victims portrayed on the glass of SCP-987 wow. mirrors have been identified. The previously mentioned SCP-987-C, K, and M mirrors. 
SCP-987-C depicts a well-to-do 62-year-old male in the bathroom of his California home in 1968. Yep. The man is bound and kneeling on the floor when a young Asian woman dressed in lingerie enters the room and proceeds to strangle the man to death. Okay, this is what I don't get. They just said it's back in like 1960-whatever. But how could they change the past? Because they're in the present, I'm assuming... And they're looking back in time about what happened to this dude back in time. So this dude is already dead. However, how is he able to notice the presence of the of a person looking at the mirror and then pleading for help if he's already dead and gone? Is there a way where they could live within these mirrors? Like a, a, a type of limbo where they don't go to heaven or hell. They have to relive this moment again and again and again until maybe they could get saved. And maybe when the person somehow maybe does save them, if that is even possible, they could go off to no, you know, heaven or hell and rest for all eternity. Who, who knows? But um, doesn't make sense if it's just you know they could actually see now. Oh my God, help me! But they're already dead. And it's been years. Like what? The scene will repeat one time and then begin to change. In this instance, the woman will usually stop at the mirror after she enters the room to reapply her lipstick. She will then kiss the mirror, leaving a red imprint on the glass what before the asphyxiating the man on the floor. When looking into SCP-987-K, the viewer will see a 34-year-old man in the hallway of his home, which has been identified as being in Maine during the early 2000s. Okay. The man is standing on a ladder while he installs a new chandelier in the ceiling. After a moment, the man loses his balance uh -oh. and becomes entangled in the elaborate lighting fixture. Bruh. As he struggles to compose himself, he accidentally pulls a length of electrical wire from the ceiling boy and hands. wrapped around the man's neck as he falls from the ladder, leading to him being simultaneously strangled and electrocuted. Okay, that's some overkill, bruh. Like, <laughs> you gotta add the electrocution on time to pause, bro. Like, y'all doing too much for this man. He was just trying to fix his chandelier. Let me see this again. Yo. Accidentally pulls a length of electrical wire from the ceiling that becomes wrapped around the man's neck as he falls from the ladder, oh my leading goodness. to him being simultaneously strangled and electrocuted. When the scene repeats, that's some starts, final destination type shit. I'm just saying, no one dies like that just abruptly. <laughs> Yo, okay, I'll chill. <laughs> to change, the man will appear to become more and more apprehensive about his task, and his final moments will become more and more painful looking. His wife will sometimes enter as well to find his dead body suspended from the ceiling before the oh scene my ends God. and starts to repeat. It's it worse and worse. SCP-987-M shows a 20-year-old woman in the bathroom of a hotel room in New York City in 1978. The woman is seen to be reacting to an aggressor who is outside the view offered by the mirror. Mm -hmm. The woman looks afraid and will try to run out of the room. Uh -oh. But a man in a denim jacket rushes the woman, stabs uh. her in the abdomen with a knife, and flees. Wow. The woman falls to the ground and dies almost instantly. When it repeats for the third time, okay. the woman will attempt to communicate with the viewer prior to the aggressor entering the scene. What the hell? She will appear inebriated and will struggle to communicate clearly. If SCP-987 was simply a collection of mirrors that displayed the final moments of individuals and changed on repeat viewings in odd and frightening ways, that would be strange enough. Yeah. But there's even more to this bizarre SCP. In addition to the mirrors is SCP-9871, commonly referred to within the Foundation as the Curator. SCP-9871 is an invisible entity, visible only to heat-sensitive cameras that takes up roughly the space of a two-meter tall person. Huh. The area it occupies is endothermic, meaning it drains the heat from nearby objects. Okay. In this instance, from ones that are roughly one to two meters away. Whoa. It has also demonstrated the ability to manipulate objects up to 8 meters away that weigh as much as 150 kilograms. SCP-9871's primary behavior is to move along the ground, going from mirror to mirror in an apparently random pattern. Jesus. It stops in front of each mirror for roughly 30 minutes before moving on to the next. It only engages in this behavior when alone, though. And if anyone is present, it will maintain at least a three-meter distance from them at all times. So it's not really dangerous? The only exceptions to this occurred when staff attempted to do anything to the mirrors other than gently clean them. Uh -oh. If the mirrors are tampered with in any way, SCP-9871 will react quickly and aggressively, making any physical research into the mirrors difficult, if not impossible. So it's basically like a guardian for the mirrors, which is really, really interesting too, let alone the powers of the mirrors. It seems like each mirror has its own unique niche per se for lack of a better term bro 
And they only found th they only found three mirrors so far that they talked about. What the heck? This is insane. Both SCP-9871, as well as the collection of all 13 mirrors, have 13? been classified as Euclid. Oh, they all found And 13. are currently contained at Research Site 14 in an airtight 5 by 12 by 3 meter chamber with concrete walls nice. that is itself enclosed in a Faraday cage. The chamber is monitored at all times by both standard and thermographic cameras, but despite this, there have been several instances of SCP-9871 seeming to breach containment and disappear for short periods of time uh -oh. before reappearing in the containment cell. On at least five known occasions, SCP-9871 dissipated from both the normal and thermal imaging cameras. In each of these instances, what? when it reappeared, a new mirror materialized as well. Which is what? the Foundation's original collection of 13 mirrors, growing to 18. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me... On at least five known occasions, SCP-9871 dissipated from both the normal and thermal imaging cameras. In each of these instances, when it reappeared, a new mirror materialized as well. What? Which has led to the Foundation's original collection of 13 mirrors, growing to 18. Is he total. creating these? But it seems likely that this number may continue to increase. While in most cases, SCP-9871 returns with a mirror that depicts a death that occurred long in the past, in one especially chilling instance, the 9871 entity disappeared a full 15 minutes before the death took place. When it returned, it had the mirror depicting the freak accident death of a man being killed by his own chandelier. Yep. Whether SCP-9871 had any hand in this death, or perhaps even all of the deaths, is currently unknown. What he does probably does. Is that the presence of the mirrors in Foundation control is the only thing that keeps SCP-9871 in containment, at least most of the time. But He's the one that's doing this, guys. I, I'm assuming this dude's like dipping to cause a death. Maybe he's the one behind the killers, you know, killing these people in front of the mirrors to help the curator take the mirror to grow his mirror army or gallery. It only makes sense, but I just don't... I don't know the logic there. Maybe he needs more mirrors, but for it to just this is this is just so so interesting. Hold on, let's just keep it going till the end. Be careful the next time you're performing a dangerous task and notice that a mirror is in view. You never know who or what may be watching. For real. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob. And be sure to subscribe as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives. And notice that it okay, so that was interesting to say the least, and it left me with a lot of questions, guys. Like this SCP, more so the curator itself, because the SCP, I'm oh, sorry, the mirrors are pretty easy to contain. They're not a problem per se, really. Like you just put them in a room, like I, they can't just get up and walk away. No one looks at them, then you know you're good. But the curator, though, on the other hand, is like the garden of the mirrors. Literally, we saw one dude like crack the mirror and he got killed instantly. He got he even got bigger, too. And he goes away and comes back. So, like. It doesn't seem like they're contained. They're containing him. Just just being honest, they say they contain the mirrors, but they're they're not really containing the curator at all. And when they try to get close to it, the curator like will move away. They, they can't get close. And the only time they could get close is when he's like protecting the mirrors. So he can literally just leave and come whenever he wants. So I feel like in the future, when more mirrors come, something's going to happen. I feel like he's doing this for a reason. And I guess we only got to wait and see. But yeah, with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this reaction, you guys enjoyed this SCP, please remember to smash that like button. It will mean the world takes, takes less than a second and it's free. And also smash that red button. If you made it all the way to the end, like always, I don't know why you guys made it this far without smashing the button. Obviously, you were intrigued or interested to watch the video to make it all the way this far. So if you want to see more, smash that red button. Join the family. We don't bite. We have a good time. So let's get it so let's get it together. And also remember to turn on post notifications so you don't miss an upload. And unfortunately that concludes today's episode. However, I'll catch you guys on the next one.